don't ever compare yourself to someone else. Compare yourself to what you knew going into this class and what you knew coming out. And you knew nothing and now you know a bunch. It's your own personal growth. And I think that's something that makerspaces allow in a way that a lot of other spaces don't, is that people really recognize their personal growth. Santa Cruz is the second smallest county in California, but it's a hotbed for innovative small companies. What was important about having that initial invite for the businesses was what are the needs? And then for the local businesses to basically say they needed the same skills confirmed what our needs were. One of our Makerspace students had an internship at Cruise Foam, which is a startup here in Santa Cruz making materials out of biomaterials. Courtney reached out to us as a new startup in the community saying, hey, do you have any interest in internships? And we said, yeah, you know, we're a startup, so we run pretty lean. So any cheap help and good help we can get, we're definitely interested in. So he was tasked with developing a surfboard made out of shrimp shells. They needed someone that could scale, and I was able to fill that niche. It leads to a symbiotic relationship that allows everyone to grow and develop. And when you can plug people in, get them situated, get them prepared, it makes for the smoothest, easiest transition from skills learned in makerspace to employment. You want to acquire the equipment that you need in order to teach these concepts and ideas and to give students the ability to differentiate themselves from other potential candidates. What we were originally expecting, you know, is, you know, some hands to help us in the lab, but nothing to the extent of what we gained from having them be a part of our, our startup and do the internship of the makerspace at Cabrillo. This is one of my students' creations. So this is just two functions combined, and they just gave it height. And now I'm having them do some mathematical analysis after they've printed, so they have a physical object to look at. Part of the reasons that math is so hard is we're not exposed to these ideas. Makerspace is helping me tell the story of pre-calculus and calculus. For me, it's not always just the outcome, it's the process. And the process of experimentation, I think, is really key to development. And so I think it's, it's excited me as a teacher that I have access to this space and these people. And it shows them that there's so many more possibilities. I think it's just this entire wave of makerspace in general that you're able to ride this wave of inspiration. We've been making models that are a lot more detailed than we have been able to do in the past. This is the first semester that we've really tried to tie it in also with our design class. We built parts for our, our 1930 jukebox, our record player, the internals for that, as well as the phone that we built has the coin slot and the headpiece and the mouthpiece. Those were all 3D printed, so we're going to be using that in the show that's coming up here shortly. The other benefit that we've had is to be able to have some internships through Goodwill of Central California coast. The focus on internships and the diversity of those internships across the disciplines in our college is really what's exciting to me. This is the prosthetic hand we developed for Michael. And when you strap it to his wrist, when he bends his wrist, the whole hand bends together and the fingers, the fingers come down. For our keyboard guard, there was nothing like it on the market. There was a lot of research done about cerebral palsy. The main problem is, is that when Galen goes to push the keys on the keyboard, he will sometimes hit one or two keys that he didn't want to hit. We made it to where he can only push one white key at a time, and that would stop him from hitting the unwanted keys. We're using our education and our time to basically come up with these solutions that are gonna help people. They're gonna, it's gonna make an impact on people's lives. Craig Calfee came on board as our business partner in our Makermatic. Craig worked on the first carbon frame bicycle to race in the Tour de France. One of the prototypes he's working on is an electric motorcycle-like vehicle, but would be completely enclosed in a body. What I'm trying to do with this project is, is very difficult, complicated, and brand new. Our interns are working on how to make that vehicle appealing to customers and to investors. It was interesting to see the business partner discover things that the students were coming up with that he hadn't imagined. I think it's really a function of getting multiple lenses and multiple viewpoints and multiple skill sets 
in one space. As small groups, they worked as teams, which you really need to have practice with. And practicing on a real-world application is, is a really great opportunity. Now they're going to have the skill set. Oh, I know how to approach a problem. I know how to come with a solution that's going to be effective, and I know how to present it. In the story that I referenced a little while ago with the student who was placed at Cruise Foam, and I said, what really prepared you to succeed in that position? And he said, really, his training as an artist and as a sculptor. And that that mix, uh, working with co-workers at Cruise Foam who were PhDs in chemistry, that that mix of skill sets and mindsets is really at the root of, of progress and innovation.